Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, with sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so Just you get alerted when it. I have a new interview uploaded. And do please leave it. comments so that I know uh, whether you like the interview or whether it sucked. Seinfeld fans will get that. Uh, my guest coming up, Bones Elias, uh, he's drummed for uh, everybody from 6 a.m. He's drummed with Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson um he's he's been involved with zach wild and he's also with hollywood gods and monsters right now as well as he's drummed in dead by sunrise uh with the late chester bennington i'd like to bring on my guest how are you doing bones how's it going Ernest? everything going good uh as they tell everybody i'm a million dollars shy of being a millionaire <laughs> John uh, Candy. wish we all could be right <laughs> yeah for sure so before we talk about your new side project, actually a couple of things are interesting. Um, uh, people uh, might not be aware, well, they'll be aware of you as a famous drummer, but um, you were in the Rock of Ages uh, national tour some years ago, which is a dynamite uh, production musical, but you just got a recent part in a local production. Tell us about that and, what, and how you're not drumming for some reason. Well, uh, like you mentioned, uh, I did the Rock of Ages, I did the national tour and uh I did it for about, uh, I think it was like three, three years or so, uh, you know, time flies. And um, I had just, um, it was weird because I retired uh, from music um, around that time. And um, I got a text from one of the guys on, on the production for, uh, you know, one of the band members that was international and they were actually inquiring about another drummer. And then it was funny because, you know, I, I kind of, responded with like a little cocky attitude like well i'm a better drummer you know yeah. and it just led to that uh and i hit the road with them and uh you know like i said i did it for a while but then um this local production which is done be by um community college and uh they contacted me because i'm actually a board member for what's called the black box theater i know they have several um around the country and we work with the college, you know, when they do productions and stuff. So they contacted me and they said, hey, you know, can we do some consultation? We heard that you did the national tour. We want to talk about maybe the characters and, you know, just a little bit of insights and stuff. And sure enough, you know, I was happy to help them out. Mm -hmm. And within that meeting, you know, they were like, hey, uh, how would you be interested in maybe like, you know, trying out for a part or something? And I go, you know what? Uh, I'll try it. You know, <laughs> And um, it was weird because... I went in and I've never done anything like this before. And uh, you know, it's something fairly new. And I walked in and I thought it was going to be like a one-on-one -on -one thing. You know, yeah, I go in there and I sit in front of people, you know, and you kind of do your part and yeah. you act and then you sing. And luckily, you know, I've been singing for a long time now. You know, I, I have a cover band. I have actually two cover bands that I've sang in locally. So um, anyways, so I went in there and, it was weird because I'm sitting here with like 20 people and, you know, I'm like, Oh crap. Like, yeah, yeah. This is me and, you know, and everybody's trying out and they're asking people, all right, who wants to go first? And, you know, a person went up and they did the thing and I was trying hard to memorize lines. And, mm -hmm. and I said, you know, I, I read a little bit online. Okay. What to do and things like that. And it just said, you know, Hey, bring, bring a paper or whatever, you know, and, and, uh, try out for the part and then you know the vocal part and i went third you know and thirds uh you know number three is like when my lucky number it's my lucky number so oh, nice. i went third i, I said i was like oh, i'm gonna go third and i nailed it and i did the part you know i did a little bit of script for stacy jacks and then i sang uh wanted dead or alive acapella okay. and um they were blown away and i was like oh. you know and i was nervous man i'll be honest with you i was really nervous <laughs> but i pulled it off and uh nice. You know, and then, you know, I waited a couple of days because they were going to do callbacks and I didn't get a callback. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I probably didn't get the part, you know. And sure enough, you know, I get a text on Saturday morning like, hey, you know, uh, would you like to, you know, be part of, you know, would you like to play Stacey Jackson? And I was like, oh, cool. You know, so oh, wow. it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great uh, musical I saw here in uh, Canada. But yeah, just um, great um, storyline and everything.
Where, um, where did you see it in Canada, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. They were touring. Um, yeah, you were part of that tour. Yeah, I was on that one. Yeah, I was right at, we're on the border with um, our sister city, Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Yeah. And um, I'm not sure if you guys came from the west to the east or the east to the west, but yeah, the GFL. I think we might have gone, gone through Buffalo, I think, somewhere on there. Okay, so then... Did you do you remember if you came over the maybe. bridge to the show or you came through Canada doing shows in maybe Sudbury? You know, I don't remember. I just know that we did a bunch of dates out there and you know, we played like like Re Regina and like St. John's and you know and Toronto and yeah. uh you know Montreal and it was crazy. It was awesome. I loved it. That was great. So we were within feet of each other, we didn't know it. That's crazy, right? Hey, man, that's what they say. You know, everybody always works, you know, and everybody's here. And they're like, yeah, I saw you. And I'm like, oh, OK. You know, and I've, I've you know, I've, I've toured for such a long time that sometimes, you know, it's, uh, you know, shows become a blur, you know, unfortunately. Absolutely. You know, and, yeah. Yeah. But no, it was a great experience and, um, uh, you know, blessed that I'm able to do this part. And um, I'm going to have fun with it. You know, I'm just going to. Yeah do my best, you know, give it my 210% like I do with a lot of things. And then, you know, it's a new experience and right. I'm coachable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, before we get into your uh, the project that you're in right now, Hollywood Gods and Monsters, uh, I mean, you've toured extensively. You've, uh, you've uh, you know, Steve, you've worked with Steve Stevens and Billy Idol, Rob Zombie, Marilyn Manson. You've been on the Jimmy Kimmel show. But I want to talk about the David Letterman show. Where, what, when you appeared on that show, what uh, band were you in? Um, when we played on David Letterman, I was working with uh, Chester. Oh, wow. Um, okay, that is a good segue with Dead by Sunrise. Yeah, Chester Bennington from uh, Lincoln Park, which yeah. uh, Dead by Sunrise was his solo project with uh, the guys from uh, Orgy, which is Ryan and Amir, and, um, you know, which was Julian K as well, too. Mm -hmm. Um and the history behind that um, is basically I joined Julian K, um, which was, again, you know, the guys from Orgy, guitar players from Orgy. And I joined that band like in 04, 05, somewhere there. And um, it morphed into what became Dead by Sunrise with uh, Chester. And then we started, you know, talking about it earlier on. And um, we, you know, just started doing Dead by Sunrise. And then it, it came time to... You know, for Chester, he wanted to really work on this project and we started doing pre-productions and then recording. And, you know, we were on Warner, released by Warner and stuff. And mm, we right. toured, uh, we, we toured, you know, we did, we did, we didn't do, I mean, we did some touring for it, but I wish we would have toured the States more, but we did a lot of Europe. Uh, right. You know, we went to Japan, um, you know, all that stuff. You know, um, and, uh, you know, we did shows here. We did the TV shows. We did, uh David Letterman and Jimmy Kimmel, and we did some shows for MTV and stuff like that. Yeah. So the David Letterman was something that was, I have to say, probably a bucket list, um, yeah, which I had sure. a lot of bucket lists. You know, I had a lot. Of, it's weird as a kid. You know, I started playing drums when I was twelve years old, and and I idolized a, a lot of musicians. You know, drummers, bassists, you know, singers and stuff. I was really into music uh, as a kid, and um, you know, one of my bucket lists was to do what a lot of these musicians that I actually got to work with later on in life is what to, to do, you know, and, and like I said, David Letterman was one of those shows and it was crazy, you know, to, to show up and play. And um, it was quite an experience. And not only was it quite an experience for me, but it was an experience for a lot of my family, a lot of my friends, you know, and, I didn't even know, to be honest with you, like a bunch of my friends and family were like having like David Letterman parties. Like, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were like, oh man, you know, they were having, it was crazy. They were having like, you know, get togethers at their houses, you know, with a bunch of people and they're like waiting, you know, by the tube to watch, yeah. you know. So it was awesome. You know what I mean? I just watched um, David Letterman. He's got a thing on Netflix. It's called My Next Interview. And I was just watching mm -hmm. him with um, Robert Downey Jr. and, um, I gotta tell you, I mean, he, his delivery is the same. His questions are the same. His um, intelligence is the same. The only thing different is he looks like Santa Claus. That's the only difference. <laughs> he's got that big scruffy beard. Oh, well, it's like Howard Hughes. <laughs> yeah, he was cool. You know, I uh, yeah. I got to talk. You know, I got to talk to him for a little bit. But you know, that's when he was going through that 
whole controversy stuff with, you know, whatever was going on with him at the time. So yeah. he's trying to be a little more private and, and, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, Hey, you got to respect people, you know, when they're trying to get their privacy and stuff, you know, yeah. just as much as with us too. Sometimes, you know, we, yeah. we expect that privacy from people, but at the same time, you know, it's like we sign up for this stuff. So we got to be there for people. And even when we don't feel like it, <laughs> did you, did you uh, end up having a good chat with uh, Marty Puffkin? With who? Paul Schaefer. Remember he played that part in Spinal oh. Tap? No, uh, we he didn't. He played the know. record store, uh, or he played like a promoter um, for yeah. Spinal Tap, and he got them at this record store, and nobody showed up. And he says, "Kick that ass! Kick that ass!" And his characters, yeah. uh, Paul Schaefer's yeah, character, was named Marty Puffkin or something. Yeah, no, we didn't. We didn't really get to, you know, we didn't really get to um, chat with a lot of people. It was it was really weird. Like we got there, and they threw us like in this room, and you know, we did sound check, which was colder. I mean, dude, it was freaking like probably 30 degrees. You're probably used to that being in Canada, you know? Yeah, yeah. We we, we was probably as cold from as, Michigan. Yeah, I mean, it, it was it was probably as cold as Edmonton, you know, that I remember, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been to Edmonton, man, and I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was really weird, you know, because they keep, they keep it like, uh, you know, some somewhere like 40 or 50 degrees, you know? So you're playing and you're, you're trying to stretch and, you know, stuff. And, oh, you mean in the uh, green room? In general, like green room oh. and performance wise, too. You probably so, do that just to keep everybody alert. I don't know. I'm just guessing because I'm sure I they don't have know. a budget to make it warm, but yeah, it was crazy. And we were told about that, you know, like, hey, you know, this is one of the things you're going to, you know, experience about, you know, going in there. It's going to be freaking cold. And yeah, man, it was, it was pretty chilly, you know. And, you know, I, you know, when you're from Arizona, you know, yeah, anything, anything over, you know, 70 degrees is under 70. I mean, is is cold. <laughs> you know that jacket. <laughs> yeah, you know I've got a jacket right now, which actually, you know, this jacket I'm wearing right now is is a jacket that was actually Chester's. Speaking of Chester, we're talking about Chester because this yeah. is a one of a kind jacket that I pulled out of my closet like maybe two three days ago, mm -hmm. and I haven't worn this jacket probably since since a little bit before you know Chester passed away. And uh -huh. it's weird because it's, you know, it's been years now and, and I pulled it out and I put it on. And I mean, I don't, I, I know this sounds kind of weird, but I could, I could smell the dude still, man. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Well, that's, that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's good. You guys had a good relationship and um, did you, um, was there any sense back then that there was something wrong? You know, um, to go into detail and, in, 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 you know, in respects to him and, you know, his family and friends and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, and, and what a lot of people know is uh, him and I had a really good connection. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because we both kind of grew up in similar similarities with, you know, being raised. Um, and, I, and I've talked about this, you know, and yeah, stuff like that. You know, I've, I've talked about my own, you know, um, uh, child abuse that I've that I encountered as a kid. Yeah. And I have no issues talking about it because uh, I've talked about it, you know, in social media and stuff like that. But. You know, we had similarities growing up yeah. and we, you know, we kind of bonded. And the thing I really enjoyed about being friends and and, and almost uh, having a little brother with Chester was that our relationship was based a lot on things that we had in common. It wasn't really musical. I mean, we, we never like really talked shop or things like that. You know, it was always like just, you know, we'd have barbecues, he'd, you know, we'd have Thanksgiving together. Uh, you know, uh, when we both lived in, in Cali, you know, on Sundays, we had Slasher Sundays mm -hmm. and we get together and, you know, we go early and pick out, you know, food, whatever we can cook. And we cook together for friends and family that would get together. And, uh, you know, so we were very aware of each other as far as when the mental breakdowns would happen or right. and it was it was very almost like telepathic or ESP or whatever you want to call it. Yep. that we would feel each other. And there was times when he would like text me or even call me, like he'd be in Japan or something. And he'd be like, Hey bro, uh, what's going on? You know, are you okay? You know, what's going on? And just weird shit like that. And, you know, we had this really, like I said, we had this really good pact with each other that we would be there for each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I ride motorcycles, you know, I, I, I love Harleys and stuff. And, 
the day that he passed away, you know, I was riding my Harley and my wife and I, you know, we were riding and we were going to breakfast and it was a morning ride. And I felt something like I needed to reach out to him. And, um, you know, ate breakfast, came home and I got distracted with had some people that were coming in for, uh, you know, they wanted to do some solar panels or whatever that we had signed up for. <laughs> and my phone is blowing up, you know, and, um, and it's the news, you know, and I'm like, ah, this isn't real. You know, this is real. I had just chatted with him a couple of weeks ago and he was <clears> like, everything's cool, yada, yada, you know, and, um, and that was that, you know, and then I, I, I got a phone call from management and, you know, I, I sat on my couch, to be honest with you, I sat on my couch for probably a week. I didn't move, you know, it yeah. was, I was, it was just, you know, it, it was shock. I was in shock and, um, uh, you know, I lost this person. And, and like I was telling you, when I was on my bike ride, it, it's almost like I felt them pass, you know, mm-hmm. I felt like something, it was, it was the weirdest feeling, you know, I believe and, that. Uh, and that was that, you know, and, and there was no signs, man, you know, there was no signs, no nothing. Um, you know, the dude was happy. He was getting the help he needed. And, and, uh, you know, it was, it was, it was the biggest shock, man, you know, biggest, wow. huge loss, you know, to a lot of us. You know? Yeah. We lost a great musician and it sounds like we lost a great human being. You knew him personally. So you, you know, you know, and, and speaking of great human being, like I said, you know, I'm wearing a jacket, I'm wearing this one of a kind jacket that he had, that he gave me. And I, you know, um, there was a time when I went sober and uh, I had just gotten out of, you know, of rehab and um i'd gone through a lot of mental stuff and you know the drugs the alcohol that shit you know the sex drugs and rock and roll you know that's yeah. cliche that yeah. and he was there for me and i remember he had this one ring as well too you know he had this one ring and, and it had you know the virgin mary on the inside it had the serenity prayer and he was like dude i'm gonna give this to you and and i still have it i look at it every day and you know there's so many reminders of just he was that guy yeah. You know, he was just, uh, just a very happy, funny guy. When he walked into a room, you could tell that yeah. that guy was in the room. He had, not only was he vocally like, you know, just a, a great singer, mm-hmm. he would walk into a room and you knew he was there because he had the biggest laugh in the entire world. Right. And it was one of those laugh, you know, his laughter was just so, uh, you know, That's like true. it would catch you, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and. And like I said, you know, I, I met Chester a long time ago when Link, even before Lincoln Park released their fir- first album, okay. I, was singing a band, I was singing in a band um, called Cycle Plague that I had in San Antonio. And uh, we, we opened up for them um, and they were on tour with a band called Union Underground, which are friends of ours too. And a band had dropped out of it and we played at this place called The Backroom, which is, you know, infamous place in Austin, Texas. Right. And uh, we showed up, we got the notice that same day and um, a bunch of us lost our jobs, you know, just to go open up for them. And yeah, uh, right. On. You know, we, we call in like, Hey, we can't go to work today. We're going to go open up for these bands and stuff. And, and sure enough, you know, they remembered that they always remembered, you know, cause I'd sit on stage, something like, you know, yeah, you know, we, we came here last minute and, you know, some of us lost their jobs. And <laughs> I remember later on, when Julian K toured with uh, Lincoln Park on Project Revolution, I was sitting ni- uh, next to Mike and I said, hey, man, you know, my band opened up for you guys. And he remembered, um, they remembered us. They were like, dude, you guys, you know, he told me the story. Yeah, man, you guys were like, you know, this and this. And, you know, we helped them with their gear, you know, put their gear up when they were playing and right. helped them tear down their gear. And um, they handed me a cassette. And luckily, you know, I didn't get, we didn't get to see them play because, my band had another show that mm-hmm. night as well too. So we had to haul ass to our other show. Yeah. And I remember popping in that cassette and, um, and I was like, man, these, these guys are going to be huge. And sure enough, you know, yeah. millions of records later, you know, and, and so I was fortunate, you know, very fortunate again, very blessed to, to have been, you know, very, very close to Chester and, and great advice from him. And, you know, just, just, a very loving person and he's very missed, you know, he's always missed. I think about him every day, if not, you know, every other day or something. Yeah. I mean, right on. Yeah. Um, let's talk about your new band right now, Hollywood Gods and Monsters. 
Um, had to get you on because I've interviewed everybody in the van, but you and I think it's I got um B left and the new um the rapper. Um that band consists of people who don't know, but I mean they're you guys are getting big. Diggity Dave, uh, Pimp My Ride, MTV celebrity. Um, David yeah. Arcon, you got Chris, his wife, beautiful singer, Rachel mm-hmm. Bellow on bass. You've got uh, Lexi X Steel Panther bassist, Lexi Fox, Travis Haley. Who I've interviewed mm-hmm. twice, he's just on a bit of a leave right now, just taking some yeah. time to uh, raise his young one. Um, mm-hmm. and you've got um, B Jennings and um, and your rapper. So, give the audience here just a few people that may not know what Hollywood Gods and Monsters is and what's the music. What style of music is it, um, and, and what does that incorporate? So Hollywood Gods and Monsters is basically a smash-up band. And what we do is we take music and we smash it up all together, kind of like a live DJ, but you're getting a live band. Mm-hmm. And you've got the elements of everything from, you know, rock music, old classic rock, to uh, you know, rap, to country even techno, uh, EDM, you know, all this, all types of music. And what's interesting about Hollywood Gods and Monsters for me as a drummer, you know, growing up as a kid, I was able to learn all types of music. And with every band that I've worked with and every type of musician that I've worked with over the years, I've been able to fit in the part. Right. And it's crazy because, like I said, this is a smash up. And everything that I'm playing, I'm able to utilize in this band. You know, there's times when I'm just a straightforward rock drummer. And then there's times when I got to switch it and I got to play some EDM, you know, electronic stuff. Right. And then, um, you know, and then a little bit of country or whatnot. And to talk about a little bit of the history with Hollywood Gods and Monsters is when the band started, um, Diggs, you know, Diggity had gotten hold of me. And Diggs and I go way back to Hollywood. You know, we go back to the Hollywood days when, when I lived there and, you know, he was there as what too. And uh, he hit me up and he's like, Hey, I've got this concept, you know, he had, he had uh, put together with Tommy Lee and uh, you know, Tommy wanted to be part of this thing. And of course, you know, Tommy is always busy doing all kinds of stuff. So right. he was like, Diggs was like, I want you to be the drummer for this. And unfortunately, you know, with COVID happening and all this stuff, I ended up losing my mom and then I lost my brother to COVID. Sorry about that. So my mentality, you know, my mental uh, state wasn't there. And of course, you know, bands got to keep going. They got to keep moving, you know, and stuff like that. And it kind of held up a little bit and then they, they had to move on. And I said, you know what? I said, do what you need to do. And, and the band continued. And um, coming around to last year, it was funny because I made a post on Facebook, just, you know, out of fun, just out of whatever. It's like, Hey, you know, I'd like to do some one-offs or maybe play, you know, some shows or, you know, maybe do a little tours here and there or whatever. And sure enough, man, my phone just started blowing up. And um, one of the phone calls was Diggs and he's like, Hey bro, you know, Hey, uh, would you, would you like to, you know, work with us and, you know, make this work again? And I'm like, well, dude, like, yeah, you know, of course. Mm-hmm. So I came back into the band and um, going back to uh, Travis, you know, Lexi, I knew Lexi from back in the day as well, too, before Steel Panther even became huge. Right, right. Um, they were like, uh, I'm trying to remember what they were called, like metal Atomic, stores. Atomic funk, Punk or something? Well, uh, he wasn't in Atomic Punks. Um, I think that was a singer and the guitar player that were in Atomic Punks. But he had been in the band, but I knew that Travis had been in the band before and it's crazy because they were playing like the Viper Room, which the Viper Room fits like, I don't know, maybe 200 people or something like that. Mm-hmm. And they were playing on Mondays. And, you know, at the time I was playing with uh, DJ Ashba, who 6 a.m. and Guns N' Roses and you know, he's right. got his own mm-hmm. thing, Ashba and stuff. And I had just moved out there to work with him. And we'd go on Mondays and hang out. And sure enough, it was funny because, you know, Travis played the part so well. Right. You know, Lexi, you know, he played the, the, the character or whatever, you know, and that when he was off stage, you couldn't even tell who he was. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I remember one night hanging out with him and, you know, he introduced himself as such a, such a humble, nice guy. Yeah. And we hung out and of course, you know, partied and all that stuff. And I didn't know it was him. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, we hit it off and it was great, you know, and I was like, and I would run into him here and there. And I, I never put two and two together, you know, yeah, yeah. that it was that he was like, see, and, you know, so forth. Cause he, I mean, dude, the guy looked so awesome on stage, you know? Yeah. 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 In the mirror and the, you know, the, the Aquanet and all that <laughs> Long hair. Like, yeah, you know. And he looked awesome. Like, he looked like an awesome rocker, 80s rocker. So, anyways, uh, you know, going back to the band. So, I got, now I got the opportunity to work with the band. And, you know, it's great to work with such talented musicians. Mm. And, um, and you know, we've we've got such a big catalog of music that we're smashing up and we still have even more that we're working on right now mm. that Diggs is putting together. And I mean, I'll tell you what, man, Diggs is like, he's a genius for putting this together because yeah. when it first came up, I was like, what, I don't know if this is going to make sense, man. You know, I was like, oh, I don't know. You know, it's, you're putting country and rock and all this stuff. And of course, you know, like now a lot of the music has progressed, even with country, you know, it sounds very rockish, yeah. but you know, just having rap and all this stuff. And I, I, I honestly thought it, it was like, man, this is going to sound like a bunch of, you know, mumbo jumbo stuff, you know, mm-hmm. sure enough, man, I, I, I got, I got the music. I started learning it and I had a few weeks to learn the stuff and I jumped on it right away. And we had a first show um, in uh, Utah, I believe, and Salt Lake city. Uh, or, uh, and, um, you know, the band has a very big following over there and sure enough, you know, got to play the first show and it was, there was a lot of people there, man. And, and it's a lot different when you're playing in front of a group of people that are right in your face, you know, on stage or whatever, good side yeah. stage, but they're right there. As opposed to when you're, when you're playing in front of 105,000 people, you know, it's a sea of people, right? right but these right. people are looking at you and I'm looking at their faces and I'm looking at the band. Everybody's having fun mm-hmm. and it's a party band. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's literally a, a, a smash up party band that is making people just smile, laugh, dance, sing. And it was awesome. And I got it. I, I saw it. I got it. I felt it. And I said, yeah, man, this is, this is awesome. And, and I'm glad that wherever we play, we're able to bring that to the people and people can relate to it, to whatever type of genre of music they like. Yeah, yeah. And so we did, they love um... it. The way Diggs blends all those songs in is just um, that's like you said. I was thinking the same word, genius, for blend. It's because you got to transition from one song to another in a different music category, and you and that's probably not easy. So he's uh, he's just amazing for that. And, and it's not, you know, I, uh, you know, I've been doing, I've been doing, like I said, I've been, I've been doing music for such a long time, and I've worked with a lot of great musicians. I've worked with a lot of great producers. Um, and I see how everybody works and, you know, Diggs has it, man. He's, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's got it up here. And, you know, yeah. a lot of times, you know, it's, it's very rare to find people like that. Um, yeah, and he, he's got something going and, and I'm glad that I'm part of it, you know, for as long as I can be. And, and, um, and I'm happy to be where I'm at right now, you know, with, with Hollywood guns and monsters and, you know, we've gotten a lot of shows under our belts now as well too, that now when we play, it's just natural. Yeah. And everybody's everybody's looking at each other, smiling at each other, having fun, you know, uh, you know, fist bumps and, you know, just high fives and and just having a blast. And that's right. what music should be, you know, should be a nice, music. happy party. Right. Good tunes. Yeah, exactly. You know, leave the Eagles at the door and um, and, you know, uh, and that's it, man. Just have fun because, you know, life's too short. man. you know, you guys just did a run in Orlando. I saw Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah we went out there um we went out there for a little break uh you know kind of regroup and um recharge some batteries and talk about a lot of stuff you know we 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 met a a friend of ours who we met through online you know jerry and he invited us to come hang out with him and uh it was great to bond with him and bond with the band and stuff and you know we just got back and uh you know we've we've got you know the start of 2023 is is it's starting to get really busy. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we're starting to get, you know, we've got a, our, our manager now, you know, John Cook, Cookie, you know, we call him Cookie and stuff, and he's working hard, man. And it's yeah. great when 
you have people that really want to work and really want to have fun yeah. and really want to play and, and throw it out there. And, um, you know, it's exciting. It's, it's exciting to have that because like I said, with all the music musicians I've played over the years, bands like that, sometimes they lose that, yeah. you know, they lose, they lose the, 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 the brotherhood, the sisterhood or whatever you want to call it, the band, and it just gets stale and it's repetitive. It's like, oh, okay, now I got to go work. You know, I got to go jam. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, and yeah. sometimes you don't want to leave your home. And this is one of those things where it's like, yeah, man, like, okay, when's the next gig? You know? Yeah. Yeah. When's the and, next rehearsal? You know, yeah. And, and we're doing it, you know, we're doing old school style, you know, we're doing it where it's like, you know, a lot of, we're doing a lot of stuff in house and, and having a lot of outside people helping us out as well too, reaching out and, you know, the band's a baby band still, you know, and, and um, I'm glad that people are seeing what it's about and and grasping, you know, the the smash up. And, uh, you know, they can go to Hollywood Gods and Monsters, you know, dot com and, yep. and check out, you know, a lot of stuff. A lot, there's a lot of content out there, you know, YouTube, you know, it's, it's great yep. that it's good that we have, you know, sources now, like not like back in the day when, you know, you. You, you know, it, it's weird. I had just had a conversation with some friends about, you know, how back in the day, you know, you, you'd have a, a cassette or a CD yeah. or something, you know, and you'd pass it on to a friend and be like, hey, man, check out this band. And now everything's just like, oh, you know, I'm going to check it out. Yeah. You know, blah, 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 blah. And then you log in and boom, it's right there. And it's Remember those cassette tapes, TDK? <laughs> I think they were like Amco or some shit. Maxwell. Maximum. Maximum, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I could still smell those cassettes, man. You know, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. You can smell the inserts. It's like those bubblegum cards, you know. You got yeah. kiss. And stuff. It's like paper that comes out of the printer in school. Everybody oh yeah, dude. That? <laughs> yeah, it was just like it's like Fast Times at Richmond High. You know. Yes, like, I love that movie too. Yeah. Yeah, you know, but yeah, but dude, it's awesome, and I'm I'm glad, and I hope people can catch on to it, and I hope yeah. that we get play and start playing you know we're we're gearing up to play more shows in nevada you know cali uh here in arizona um you know texas yeah uh, we're we're branching out man you know we're hoping to hit hit the east coast as well too and i don't know maybe go to japan one of these days you know yeah if you can't if you don't go to japan come up to canada we're not too far oh there you go you know you can, have, as here, as you as can as show as them you... the ropes yeah i know right as long as they let us in <laughs> yeah <laughs> Hey, what's your favorite song um, that to play? My favorite song to listen to is Main Street, but um, what's your favorite song to play? Oh man, probably has you a know, bunch of different genres that you can tap into your um, your your, your um, portfolio of drum skills. Uh, you know, I I'll be honest with you. Uh, we we play at the very end. We play a song. Uh, you know, we play the Foo Fighters, and we play. Um, and I'll be honest with you, and I, I hate I hate to put myself on the spot here, but I suck at titles. No, that's all right. <laughs> like, I've always been like that, man. I've been in original bands where we go, hey, let's play song one and play song two, you know. Okay. And uh, I know that's bad of me to think of ah, uh, whatever you like that, but we play uh we play some Foo Fighters and and it's great because you know, uh, you know, just just showcasing towards the end of that band, you know, uh towards the end of our set, you know, and being able to play some Foo Fighters. Uh, mixed yeah. up with you know other bands that we you know we're working with i think that's like one of the favorite favorite ones you know that'd be cool if um when you guys um you know keep growing and uh you go on a bill with maybe some of these artists that your some of your smash ups contain their tunes they can come yeah. on during that part for 30 seconds that'd be that'd be probably a, that'd be probably a dave genius suggestion i think well you know it's funny because i i uh Years ago, you know, one of the bands I was in with uh, Julian K, uh, we toured with Papa Roach and, you know, we got really close to those guys. And every now and then, you know, Jacoby, I'll see him out now and we do a smash up, you know, we do a Papa Roach uh, smash up and I, I picture it, you know, nice. I'm a visionary and I see into the future and I see, I see, you know, Jacoby jumping up with us one of these days and, and wow. doing his part, you know, and I, I see it, man, it's going to happen. That's I know it's gonna happen one of these days, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. If you can envision it, it can materialize, right? It's just about energy. Yeah. No, definitely. It's like uh what's that movie, uh Wayne's Road, you know? If you yeah. it, they will come, you know. Jim Morrison's yeah. gonna come. hopefully he doesn't show up naked and you know <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to see him. 
Um, <laughs> two more questions for you. It's going out. Yeah. Uh, well, this is um, from Canada, but I've got a lot of American viewers, as you know. I think you've seen my channel. Um, I think you, you were talking about the Richie Costin interview. Mm. Um, if you could name a Canadian musician or artist that's um, inspired you, um, who would it be? Or the band or the artist? Brian Adams, man. Right on. Cuts like a knife. Yeah, he's he's one of my all-time favorites as well. He's a Canadian legend. Um, you know, he's got that voice, dude, that just, he's got that raspy voice. I was just going to say I, that, raspy, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I've always gravitated to to those types of singers, like, you know, Chester, uh, Brian, um, you know, uh, the uh, singer from Fuel, you know, all of these guys, you know, uh, Richard, Patrick from Filcher, you know, that man, these even these, Richie Cotson. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, uh, you go back to even, you know, um, I mean, there's so many singers from back in the day that had that raspy voice. And then, you know, when you got back, when you got into like the 80s and 90s, everybody was singing clean, you know, and yeah. then you know, again, here came Chester, you know, with that raspy, you know, kind of like, I'm going to kick your ass, you know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pissed off Backstreet Boy, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and, uh, you know, so I've always like gravitated to that. And and it's crazy that, you know, he's he's Brian's touring again this year. And yeah, he's just in a Vegas uh, residency. Yeah, and I'm hoping I can go see him. I was talking to my wife about that. I'm like, I want to go see him. You know, I've never seen him live. You know. I'm oh sure yeah, I've seen a him lot of people are saying that he's he could still you know sing sing with that voice. You know. What I mean? Oh yeah, and this guitar player, I think his last name is Valence or Valence. He's wild, man. He throws the guitar around his shoulder. Like, I mean, yeah, you see that happen here and there, but I mean, it's a it's a gamble. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, definitely. And another band. That I inspired with a lot, you know, that that we toured with a long time. It's a birthday, uh, uh, the birthday massacre, and, right? Yeah, uh, you know, they're out of Toronto and such a such a such a lovely, so loving of a band. And you know, uh, we toured with them. Like I said, when I was in Julian K, going back to that band, uh, that we toured with them so for so many years, here and off and on. And and it was great to see them the way they work and you know just their fans and fan base and stuff. So. That's another good band that I like. Thanks, man. Yeah, well, I got to work with a Canadian band, by the way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a shout out uh, from um, uh, Calgary called uh, Cobra uh, Cobra and the Lotus. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of them. Yeah, we toured with. Uh, I met Cobra Page on the Metal All Stars tour. We were talking about Zach Wild earlier, and uh, I met her on um, on the Metal All Stars tour. And then I got to tour with her. Uh, I joined Cobra and the Lotus, uh, opening up for Kiss and Def Leppard. Wow! Well, I mean, yeah. And we we played in Toronto. We played at the uh, what's that? Uh, it's like a beer. Um, <laughs> the Molson, the well, the Molson, yeah. The Molson Center would be outside of Toronto near Barrie. Is that the one, or was it in I downtown to Teal? It's an amphitheater. It's outside, uh, and I'm 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 positive it was. I think it was the Molson Center. Amphitheater. Yeah yeah cool yeah well thanks for your time uh uh bones um it was very gracious of you yeah everybody go to hollywoodgodsandmonsters.com i'll put it in the description box click on go to the youtube watch all their videos get their stuff man it's just it's really interesting like uh bones was saying you originally think of me think ah, oh, that's not gonna work but the way digs blends these songs in it's just amazing it's just great uh, Travis is uh, just taking a break from the band. All you uh, Lexi Fox fans, he'll be coming back. I've heard some things, yeah. but, you know, there's no timeline. But one question, my friend, what is the opposite of unsubscribe? Subscribe. Do as Bones Elias says and subscribe to Border City Rock Talk. We get these great interviews with great interviewees. And make sure you hit that subscribe bar button and the notification bell. Once again, my friend, thanks a lot. Thank you. I appreciate your time and uh, stay stay warm. <laughs> I will. I'm just wearing the toque. I just thought I'd wear it just for like uh, shits and giggles and my last interview and I'm, you know, I'm still giggling. So it's the one. There you go. By the way, I, I love your backdrop. I love the the Mexican flag with the uh, skull and the. I'm know, a the, big fan of Mexico, man. Acapulco, baby. Know, the, yeah. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, no. I, I appreciate that because that's, you know, that's my roots right there. So. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I've been to awesome. that fine country about a dozen times. I mean, Mexico City is just a beautiful country. Very, very beautiful. So, all right. 
Well, thank you, man. Again, I appreciate you taking the time to interview me and, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, people that tune in and subscribe, you know, get, get, uh, get to see this and also other stuff that you do and much success to all that you do. Appreciate your time again. All right. Thanks, Bones. All right. See you later. Yeah.